For Pope Paul VI, marital relations are much more than a union of two people. They constitute a union of a loving couple with a loving God, in which the two persons create a new person materially, while God completes the creation of adding the soul. For this reason, Paul VI teaches in the first sentence of Humana Vitae that the transmission of human life is a most serious role in which married people collaborate freely and responsibly with God the Creator. Humana Vitae is clear about the intrinsic connection between the unitive and procreative meanings of the sexual act. It states, There is an unbreakable connection between the unitive meaning and the procreative meaning of the conjugal act. This connection was established by God and cannot be broken by man on his own initiative without reference to the Creator. Humana Vitae explains that the Church condemns artificial contraception since it violates both the procreative and unitive meanings of the human conjugal act. To engage in marital relations using artificial contraception is to engage in an act that has the potential for creating new life and tremendous emotional bonds between male and female, whilst at the same time undercutting this potential. If, therefore, there are well-grounded reasons for spacing births arising from physical or psychological condition of husband and wife or from external circumstances, the Church teaches that married people may then take advantage of the natural cycles inherent in the reproductive system and engage in marital relations only during those times when the woman is infertile. The Church condemns as always unlawful the use and means which directly prevent conception, even when the reasons given appear upright and serious. By so doing, they obstruct the natural development of the generative process put there by the Creator. There are also adverse physical side effects. The husband and wife mutually agree to abstain from marital relations during the fertile period when for reasonable motives the birth of another child is not desirable and when the infertile period occurs they use their married intimacy to express their mutual love and safeguard their fidelity towards one another. In doing this they certainly give proof of a true and authentic love. Humana Vitae calls on priests to spell out clearly and completely the Church's teaching on marriage in this area. Dr. Janet Smith writes the following. The last many decades have revealed that the Church has been very wise in its continual opposition to contraception on moral grounds, for we have begun to see that it leads to many vicious wrongs in society. It facilitates the sexual revolution, which leads to much unwanted pregnancy and indeed abortion. It has made women much more open to sexual exploitation by men. In fact, Humana Vita predicted a general lowering of morality should contraception become widely available, and I think it is manifest that ours is a period of very low morality, much of it in the sexual realm. Western society has undergone a rapid transformation in terms of sexual behaviour and few would agree that it is for the better. Contraception has greatly facilitated this downward trend. It has also greatly contributed to a divorce culture and the breakup of family life in general. Dr Janet Smith continues, Sex is for babies and for bonding. If people are not ready for babies or bonding, they ought not to be engaging in acts of sexual intercourse. The modern age tends to treat babies as burdens, not as gifts. We speak about accidental pregnancies as if getting pregnant were like getting hit by a car. Some terrible accident has happened to us. But the truth is that if a pregnancy results from an act of lovemaking, this means that something has gone right not that something has gone wrong. Babies are treated as an unwelcome intrusion on the sexual act. Women take the pill to thwart their fertility, as if fertility were a disease against which we need a cure. Contraception treats the woman's body as if there's something wrong with it. The use of contraception suggests that God made a mistake in the way that he designed the body and that we must correct his error at all costs. Let us not fail to mention that many forms of contraception are abortifacients. 
Contraception then enters a note of tremendous negation into the act of lovemaking, but it should be the most wonderful act of affirmation. This is conveyed by making a total gift of oneself to the other. The use of contraception also calls into question the vows which the couple made to each other and to God on their wedding day, because the, the spouse's total gift of themselves to each other is withdrawn or withheld. In one of his encyclical letters, St. John Paul II wrote the following. Precisely because the love of husband and wife is a unique participation in the mystery of life and of the love of God himself, the Church knows that she has received the special mission of guarding and protecting the lofty dignity of marriage and upholding the more serious responsibility of the couple in the transmission of human life. People give all sorts of reasons why families should be limited through contraception. Some are guided by purely materialistic considerations. Others believe that the world is overcrowded, which is a lie. The ultimate reason for these mentalities, St. John Paul II goes on, is the absence of God in people's hearts, which fuels an anti-life mentality. Pope Paul VI, Blessed Paul VI now, affirmed that the teaching of the Church on the two meanings of the conjugal act, the unitive and procreative will by God, are not allowed to be broken by man on his own initiative. When these two meanings are separated, man and woman act in a purely subjective way without reference to the divine plan, manipulate and degrade human sexuality and with it themselves and their married partner by altering its value of total self-giving. It is a falsification of the inner truth of conjugal love. The choice of natural rhythms when controlling a family involves accepting the cycle of the person, that is the woman, and thereby accepting dialogue, reciprocal respect, shared responsibility and above all self-control. Knowledge of NFP, which is natural family planning, must be made accessible to all married people and also to young adults before entering into marriage through clear instruction and education given by married couples, doctors and experts. <coughs> Thank you for listening and God bless you.